Welcome to the Troubleshooting Unified Communications or Cisco TUC CCVP series. <laughs> That's a mouthful of acronyms. My name is Jeremy Chara and I'll be the instructor hanging out with you as we go through this series talking about Cisco voice technology and what we can do as we troubleshoot it. In this opening nugget, I not only want to cover an overview of the CC, CCVP certification track, but I want to give you a feel for this TUC series. From my vantage point, I just finished it. I just, just before I'm talking to you right now, I just finished recording the final nugget of this series, so I have a really good idea of what's in it. And I want to give you the, the big picture view of what it looks like, what kind of information you're going to learn about, and what we'll cover as we go through it. The last thing I want to talk about in this opening nugget is how you can get the most from this series. So I want to maximize your learning potential using CBT Nuggets. Well, let's start off by looking at the Cisco certification track as a whole. And I want to spend the next two minutes talking to you on a personal level why you should get Cisco certified. And it's my goal in these next two minutes to completely convince you if you're not taking certification tests for Cisco, to do it, to, to get into that world, because Cisco certification is more valuable than, well, uh, I'm biased, right? But I'd say more valuable than any certification out there. And I have the MCSE, I have the CNE, I've, I've gone through those ranks, and when you finish, you get the little paper printout saying, congratulations, you're certified, and you know, Bill Gates' signature is on it, which makes me think I'm very special, but there's not much else that you get. It's now up to you to go find a job using these MCSE and CNE credentials attached to your name, uh, and, and hopefully people recognize them and say, well, you must be smart, I'll hire you. Well, in the Cisco world, it's not that way. I mean, okay, sure, you get the, you get the certificate, right, with the John Chambers signature on it, and you, get the, you even get the little business card saying I'm a CCNA. It's not a business card. It's like a license almost. You could like flash your CCNA and CCNP license at people. The, but that's not the value. The value is in the fact that Cisco incents companies to hire you, like an incentive, in, essentially to move up in partner levels with Cisco and get deeper discounts on buying Cisco gear, Cisco equipment, you have to hire X number of people certified at certain levels. It's your partner requirements. So more so than any other vendor, Cisco is going out there and saying, we need a CCNA. It's, it's not you know one of those job postings that says CCNA. CCNA optional. They're going to say CCNA required. We need a CCNA in order to fill this role, or we need a CCIE in routing and switching, or in voice, or whatever the case may be, in order to get this level of certification with, with Cisco. So that being said, people are looking for you, not just you looking for people. Now, I also, I also don't want to paint a false picture. I remember when I got my CCIE in routing and switching, um, people, you know, people were like, oh, you're a CCIE. So when you got it, did you get home and there's like 50 messages on your voicemail saying you've got a job, call here? I'm like, what are you talking about? No, no, there wasn't one. I mean, th there was maybe one uh, from my mom or something saying, how did you do? But, you know, that's, that's about it. There, there's, there's no companies that get your information and go out after you. So I don't want to paint this false picture of, of uh, you know, just get certified and, and uh, your, your job woes are worried. Uh, what? What did I just say? Your job rows are over. Um, you still have to be proactive and go out there. But the certification track was recently revised to where now you've got CCNA voice uh, being an official requirement for it. Uh, meaning, it, we're talking about CCVP at this point. So you've got to get your CCNT, CCNA, now CCNA voice to go into your CCVP, which is five certification exams, and then move on to your CCIE voice if you decide to go that direction. Now, you can take these exams in any order you want, meaning if you take this series and you're like, man, I, I don't have my CCNA voice, it's no worries. You can go past the certification exam for TUC, and you're good as gold is, you know, pass all five of these. You just won't get the certification awarded you, to you until you go past the prerequisites exams uh, you know, that's required by Cisco. And once you do, poof, you, you get them all at one time. Now the cool thing is each exam has an expiration of three years and every exam can renew each other. Meaning if you get the CCA uh, voice, let's say you get this certification, you now have a CCNA voice that lasts for three years. As soon as you pass one exam from the CCVP track, 
you now have a CCNA voice renewed another three years. Now, this isn't three plus three. It's just a refreshed three years to where you have a fresh three years that you can go on that. So it's not like you get suddenly six years if you were to pass your first exam in the first month. Um, you, you still just get three years. But the good news about that is every exam you take, you know, you pass the second one, three years. Third one, three years. Fourth one, three years. You get your CCVP, okay, three years, and now you've got a three-year lifespan on this. You go on and take your CCIE voice uh, written exam. We'll say two years later, this renews, this renews, this renews. Everything renews for three years. Or it even goes cross. You start passing CCNP exams over here. It renews this, it renews this, it renews that. So Cisco, their expiration policy is awesome. To where I, I'm at the point where I have a CCIE routing and switching, a CCSP, a CCVP, and some other miscellaneous ones that aren't even shown here uh, on this list. And if I had to keep up with all of them, sure, forget it. I couldn't do it. But every every two years, because my CCIE only lasts two years, I just pass the one written exam and it renews all of them. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm uh, starting to study for my CCIE voice. Um, I don't know why. I, I, I went through the pain of getting my CCI routing and switching, and I got it, and I was so happy, but I said I will never, ever, ever do that again. But here I am, you know, what it was four or five years later after this, and I'm like, yeah, why not? Let's try it again. So I've, uh, I just passed the written exam for my CCIE voice, so I'm now lab qualified, but that automatically renews my CCIE routing and switching, all the professional, every, every certification I have for Cisco, so I don't spend needless time retaking old exams just to keep everything up to date. CCVP is a little unique in the sense that it is the only certification that Cisco has that has two potential paths to get there. There's an old one, or what I call track one. I guess I, guess I shouldn't call it old, just because I don't want to devalue anything. It's not worse, it's just old. <laughs> it's the first one that came out, which is track one right here. And then you've got the newer one, which is track number two. Now it's not, first, let me just show you this. I'm going to take you to Cisco's certification website. Um, this is the URL I gave you right here, cisco.com forward slash certification. And if you scroll down on here, you can see you know, all the different levels of certification. Here we go. Voice, shoot over, CCNA voice, CCVP. Click on that guy and you will see that you have two potential paths right here you've got C voice you know this is this is first path right here a required exams C voice CIPT1 QOS CIPT2 TUC second path this guy right here uh, QOS C voice TUC CIPT4 and gateway gatekeeper so this is the older one the second path right here that I have listed on this guy and this is the newer one now I will say this is where everything's going so Cisco will recommend if you are just starting your CCVP, go this route. And maybe I don't I don't know. Maybe by the time you're hearing this, maybe there's only one certification track. But I don't see that happening for years and years and years and years. So my thought is that you'll have your choice and I would recommend if you haven't started, start with this one because Cisco's putting a huge focus on call manager. You can see we now have two separate exams for call manager, whereas over here we actually had just one exam for call manager and you could either pass version 4 or version 6. And the reason that this whole thing even happened was because Cisco came out with call manager 4. Cisco Call Manager 4, the Windows version, uh, which has been running for eons and eons. And it, it, you know, its predecessor was Call Manager 3, which was Windows, Call Manager 2, which was Windows. And now when they went with Call Manager 5 and Call Manager 6, which Five is now almost a figment of the imagination. It's going away. Six, and, and now you can say seven and beyond. Uh, when they went with these versions of Call Manager, they said, this is our major focus. We're going with the Linux appliance, and this is the core of the network. So we want more of a focus on it in the CCVP certification track. But they realized that the Windows version is staying around for a long, long time. This isn't like you know, Windows XP, where Windows XP, it's like, okay, well, Vista came out, let's upgrade to that. Oh, Windows 7 came out, let's upgrade to that. People just upgrade versions of Windows because they just do. That's what you're supposed to do. Well, with Call Manager 4, it's kind of like, hey, you know, it's stable. It works. We've got tens of thousands invested in it. Why change? I mean, for people, this is a PBX mindset. You put the PBX in the, in the room, and you don't touch the PBX for years, for a decade, before you decide, oh, well, maybe we'll upgrade the PBX system. So that's why Call Manager 4 is going to hang around for such a long time. So in the old track, it's not any easier, I'd say, or, or anything like that. It's just there's, there's, just, uh, there's more of an overlap right here.
C Voice in the new one and this one, it's now C Voice 6.0, has been upgraded to include a lot of the information of Gateway Gatekeeper, which is troubleshooting gateways and gatekeepers. Profound. So with C Voice 6.0, I will say if you're taking the old track, you have less to study for right here because you'll get most of it in the C Voice 6.0 exam. Uh, in this, in Call Manager CIPT2, you're getting a lot more information on video, you know, doing video, a huge amount of security. Uh, integrating security with call manager so all of those things which in CBT nuggets we've actually integrated these into one really big uh, call manager series so it's your choice if you've begun in track one then keep going you know finish it it's not like you go to a job and they say well do you have the old one or the new one it's it's a CCVP is a CCVP so now let's get into the feel of this series Cisco TUC what can you expect well, I will tell you, the feel of it is a spattering of all types of voice concepts. We'll be moving from call manager specific stuff into the IP phones themselves, into Cisco Unity voicemail, into CTI ports, into routing, into quality of service, into, I mean, just blah, the shotgun effect. All kinds of topics uh, scattered all throughout this series, which, I'll be frank, makes it very difficult to talk to because... I'm not too sure what your background is. So the way I geared this series was in just about every topic, I tried to put enough of an introduction into that concept to give you a good idea of what it is before we get into the troubleshooting specifics. For example, uh, Cisco Unity. Well, before we get into how to troubleshoot Cisco Unity, I'll give a, a little 5-10 minute preview of what Cisco Unity is all about, uh, what, are, what are the major components of it, how it integrates with the call manager. I'll actually show how to do it and demonstrate a call manager Unity integration. So that way you have a foundation to build off of before we get into, okay, here's troubleshooting. Because if you know if you come in and you haven't seen Cisco Unity that much, then going into the administrative tools for Cisco Unity won't make much sense because you don't know what those even do. So that's what I try to do for just about every topic is give a, a little five ten minute sneak peek of what it is and FYI for more info go check out this series to get all the depth of this but it will give you enough of a foundation to build on. Now as you might imagine Cisco focuses everything around call manager in their their uh, control sense uh, so call manager is a major focus of this we'll be talking about call manager IP phone troubleshooting call manager route plans how to troubleshoot uh, call failures calls coming in from the gateway MGCP and call manager how those integrate so a lot of call manager discussion as as we go through this as they've they've designed the certification to be um, so with all that being said you, you've probably read it already it should hopefully most likely be the last series of your CCVP track meaning you pr uh, I don't I shouldn't say it. it depend your experience may vary so let me just say that but I would suggest taking this series right here right now as the last because at that point you will have the broad scope of everything else CCVP to bring into this to be like oh yeah I've seen that before. Okay, let's you know review it and then talk about the the troubleshooting side. Oh wow, I've encountered that before. I I didn't know you could do that to fix this issue. So the the troubleshooting side of it will be much more valuable to you if you've had some experience already with the components that we're going to talk about. Now Cisco geared this series to address the most common TAC calls. Now this it, it may sound like some incentive right there on Cisco's part. They're like, yeah, we're tired of getting your calls, right? So here's how to fix it yourself. But that's that's not their focus. They're just saying these are the most common issues that people run into in the IT realm and voice over IP realm. So why not create a troubleshooting series that says here's the mindset on fixing those issues? Lastly, let me talk about how you can get the most from this series, this Cisco TUC series. First and foremost, repetition. It has been scientifically proven that if you just hear something, first off, you only remember about 10 to 20 percent of what you're hearing, and then you'll only remember it for about a week if you hear it one time. So I would say the beauty of this is you can go through it again and again and again and again. And you can do things that help solidify it in your mind, like taking notes, writing down key information, pause it. You know, that, that's one of the uh, beauties of having the e-learning realm is that you can just pause me 
and then write down whatever information was fresh in your mind, get it on paper, look at it, stare at it, however many learning modalities as, as you get into uh, you know, instructional design and all that kind of stuff. You learn about all these different modalities people hear, the sense, the, the, the visual, the you know, audio, all these things help your learning. And the more of those things you can combine together, the better off you're going to be in remembering the information. The biggest thing you can do is get some lab equipment to practice on. I always suggest, you know, when, when people first get into certification at CCNA level, I always say the best thing you can do is go out and buy a little 25, 14, you know, cheap $20 router from Cisco. You know, from decades ago, sure it's not fast, but boy it works and it has the whole iOS on there. So you can go out and you can practice everything that we're talking about. Well. I'm making the re same recommendation, but instead of the $20 uh, uh, CCNA do jobber, I have to break the bank because voice is new, voice is you know hot, and it's the newest kind of stuff, so it's kind of expensive. Ideally, a 2801 will give you everything that you need, but budget-wise, you could always grab a 2600 XM or 3600, which will, with a bunch of flash and RAM shoved in there to where it can support some voice modules. Grab some voice modules, some FXO, FXS, T1 modules, just so that you can set this up in a lab environment. And I'll tell you what, the more real you can make it for yourself, the better off. Um, I, my, my house is insane to where if I could draw a floor plan, I have a, I have a I, I don't know what small is, a fairly reasonably sized house. It's 1,600 square feet. So you walk in the front door, and right up front, here's my, my, uh, my TV room, right? You walk in there, and there is a Cisco IP phone. You walk around the corner, and I have a, my hobby is, is fish tanks. I love fish tanks, big saltwater uh, aquarium. And right up there is a uh, Linksys IP camera that's streaming video of that to a website so I can watch my fish tank elsewhere and over here's another IP phone. Every single room is its own VLAN. Wireless is its own VLAN. I have a 3550 inline power switch supporting my house. So my, my point is not to sit here and be like, check out my house, dude. My point is to sit there and say, I'm telling you, I have learned so much just by goofing around with this at home. My phone lines come into an FXO port, get converted, you know, how, well, how do I make all my phones in my house ring, you know, when I get a call? They got to figure it out, you know, they're just tinkering with it. Um, if, if, you, if you do it, you know, in your own home, in your company, in a lab environment, the more real you can make this for yourself, the better off it's going to be and the cooler it's going to be, which is going to inspire you to learn even more. Um, I also mentioned virtualized Cisco call manager and Unity boxes. Cisco, bless their hearts, has decided that they will make Unity, call manager, and every other voice application that they produce, almost, recognize VMware www.vmware.com which VMware bless their hearts as well has also made VMware server and also their ESXi platform available free um, ESXi is of course the ideal because that you know VMware server installs on top of Windows or Linux ESXi doesn't have to install on anything you essentially set up a little server box and install ESXi server and then you can get a little catalog you've got call manager you've got unity you've got a Windows test box you've got you know a soft phone you can create all these virtualized machines on there to, to test this out and call manager will install on there without doing a hardware check yeah, sure. It's going to pop up there and say, uh, yeah, you're not using a supported platform. I recognize VMware, but it will say, I'll still install. Whereas if you just grab a little you know, Dell box or something like that, it's going to be like, whoa, not supported, not going to install here. So good news. Thank you, Cisco for letting us do that because now you can run this on virtualized environments which you know of course virtualized you go oh well that means I can use them all in one box yeah but virtualization means I can snapshot it so if I'm gonna do something that's really gonna hose up call manager I can take a snapshot of it do it try it out hose it up and hey hit revert to snapshot to undo all my changes so I don't spend all my study time reinstalling call manager to to unbreak it right so where do you know now the big question so where do I get call manager software that my friend is up to you um, I went on eBay and bought it from eBay because Cisco does not offer call manager from their uh, site at least 
At this point, they do not. Uh, so Unity, Unity, woohoo! Unity in version 7.0, they started allowing you to download the full version of Unity from their site because it's a fully licensed product. But unfortunately, Call Manager hasn't caught up yet. Um, the, the train at Cisco has said, okay, we, you have to buy it, you have to get the CDs from us. So what I did is I you know, invested 80 bucks, went on eBay, bought somebody's uh, software kit. Of course, you have to run it in unlicensed mode, but Cisco again, bless their hearts, has given us up to 50 device unit supports for unlicensed mode. So you can use it in a lab environment without buying a license. Um, the, again, you know, I, some people have other means of getting the software, and I'm just going to I'm going to leave it at that, my friend. <laughs> you know, there's there's other means out there um, because you know, in the uh, the recorded realm, to where you know this is this is all being recorded. I I can't just say I never said that because somebody's going to be like, actually, you did at uh, time marker twenty minutes thirty three seconds. You said you know so so I'll just say there are other means of getting it, but I bought it off eBay, so that's that's a great way to get uh, a lab environment going. So dig deeper. When I'm talking about something, and if if you go, well, wait a sec, what about what about this? Pause me, you know, stop me, hit the pause button, go to the web, research it, go to your lab, try it out. You know, I wonder what would happen if I hung up that, you know, try it out. You know, that's that's the best way to find out, document your own experience, and then lastly, fall in love. I know it sounds goofy for me to say that, but it's true. You will be so much better at any technology that you love than something that you don't. And I have to admit, if you've, if you've heard some of the CCVP series up till now, you've probably heard me tell this before, but when I got put into voice over IP, I hated it. Hated, hated, hated voice. Because I, I had my CCI in routing and switching, I thought, I just want to live here. I want to live in BGP and, and uh, route dampening. And, uh, you know, just routing and switching floated my boat. So when I got thrown into voice, I'm like, I don't want to make phones ring. That's not fun. But after forcing myself to just do it and configure it and learn it, the more and more I got into it and did all of this stuff, you know, from here on up, the more and more I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool. And when you start going the extra mile to really know how it works, for example, you know, if, if you start off and you start saying, okay, well, I, I guess I know how voice becomes packets. You know, I guess you talk and it puts it in a packet, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, talking and it puts it in a packet, sure. But when you dig deeper and you start saying, well, how does it work? And you find out, oh, there's this Nyquist theorem. And he said that you have to sample human voice 8,000 times a second to get high, you know, and, and it converts it to binary. And, you know, as soon as I saw, you mean, you mean your voice becomes binary? You know, immediately all the subnetting and routing and all. I'm like, this is pretty cool. You know, it starts becoming cooler and cooler. So now I can say I like voice just as much as I like routing and switching. Wow. I actually said it. I didn't think I'd, uh, normally I'd be like, I really, but I really do. I really do like voice as much as I like routing and switching because when you know it in depth, it just gets that much cooler for you. So that, that's, my, that's my, in a nutshell, how to get the most from the Cisco TUC series. You can probably apply that logic to just about any Cisco certification and, well, I guess any topic that you want to master in this realm. My next one is woodworking trying to do that. So that's the Cisco TUC series in a nutshell. I'm excited to get going with it and uh, start on it. So I will see you in the next nugget.